So we're going to open with a song that's called Saint Anne no Una. It's uh, if anybody's attended Black Saint Anne, that's pretty well one of the hymns that's sung on a regular basis. of the pilgrimage and so we welcome all who have been able to gather here uh, in the uh, church of uh, St. Bernard Mission in Gruard and also those of you who are joining us uh, online. As we gather to celebrate this Eucharist we call to mind God's mercy and our need for his love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Ah, Zariah, the rod of my anger, the club in their hands is my fury. Against the godless nation I send him, and against the people of my wrath I command him to take spoil and seize plunder, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. But this is not what he intends nor does he have this in mind, but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off nations, not a few. For the Lord says, by the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I have understanding. I have removed the boundaries of peoples and have plundered their treasures. Like a bull I have brought down those who sat on thrones. My hand has found, like a nest, the wealth of the peoples, and as one gathers eggs that have been forsaken, so I have gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved a wing, or opened its mouth, or chirped. Shall the axe bond itself over the one who wields it, or the saw magnify itself against the one who handles it? As if a rod should raise the one who lifts it up, or as if a staff should lift the one who is not wood. Therefore the Sovereign, the Lord of hosts, will send wasting sickness among his stout warriors, and under his glory a burning will be kindled, like the burning of fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord will not abandon his people. The Lord will not abandon his people. The proud crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the stranger. They murder the orphan. The Lord will not abandon his people. They say, The Lord does not see. The God of Jacob does not perceive. Understand, O dullest of the people. Fools, when will you be wise? The Lord will not abandon his people. He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who disciplines the nations, he who teaches knowledge to human beings, does he not chastise? For the Lord will not abandon his people. For the Lord will not forsake his people. He will not abandon his heritage. For justice will return to the righteous, and all the upright in heart will follow it. The Lord will not abandon his people. May we pass all the other here. Hallelujah, 
disciples approached him saying explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field he answered the one who sows the good seed is the son of man the field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom the weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sowed them is the devil the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all the causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Be seated. How should we deal with the bad people among us? This is not just a hypothetical question, it's a real dilemma. And it was a problem for Jesus' followers while he was teaching them, preparing them for the time when he would no longer be with them. I mean, Jesus knew that he was going to die, accused of blasphemy, of offending the Jewish religion. He told his apostles about it three times, not once or twice, but three times. Did you ever notice how often the number three appears in stories? Even humorous jokes or children's stories. A priest, a minister, and a rabbi were discussing what to do with their collection not just two of them, but all three. And as the joke progresses, the priest, the minister, and the rabbi each do something to move the story along. The number three seems to make any story complete or perfect. Goldilocks and the three bears, Mama Bear, Papa Bear, and Baby Bear. Or the three pigs. There are not only three pigs, but the wolf will do three things to each of their homes. I'll huff and I'll puff. Now blow your house down. So three times Jesus tells his apostles that he is going to be handed over to the Jewish leaders who will have him killed. But after three days, there we go again, he will rise again. But he will eventually leave them. Not totally, mind you, because he promised to send the Holy Spirit who will be with us to the end. To the end? And when is that supposed to be? We don't know. We call that the second coming of Christ. That is when the end comes. So we have the first coming of Jesus when he was born in Bethlehem, lived his life, and then his death and resurrection. That's the first coming, about 2,020 years ago. We started counting the years of the common era with the birth of Jesus Christ. And when will the second coming be? We don't know. Jesus told his followers that they know neither the hour nor the day. It's sometime in the future. So what we are living right now, you and me, are what we could call the in-between times. It's in between the first coming of Jesus and his second coming. These in-between times go from the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem until the second coming. We don't know when. One way that we can understand the Bible 
all that Jesus said and did is that it tells us how he wants us to live our lives during these in-between times. One of the issues that the community of believers will struggle with after Jesus is gone is how we should deal with people who are bad and who do bad things in our community. Every community seems to have such people. It has been like this since the beginning of time. There are people who seem to want to do their own thing and just cannot seem to think and behave like the rest of the community. Now we have to be very careful when we start talking like this. Not everyone in any community is going to be exactly alike. We are all individual people with our own thoughts and feelings and dreams and desires. And that's good. We need that in every community. Variety is the spice of life, as we say. And indeed it is. But some people seem to be really bad, almost from the day they were born. They're hard to deal with. I've met people like that, and maybe you have too. And we wonder, how should we deal with this? So there's a story that Jesus tells about what we call the weed and the wheat. In this parable, Jesus says that a farmer planted wheat in his field. And at night, when everybody was sleeping, an enemy came and planted weeds in the same field. And when his workers saw that there were weeds growing up with the wheat, they said to the master, Master, what should we do? Here among all of your wheat are planted some weeds. Should we go and, and pull up those weeds and, and burn them? The Lord says no. Now at one point, the disciples go back and say to Jesus, what should we do? How should we understand this? The actual parable of the weeds and the weed is in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. And Jesus is telling his disciples parables about many things, about the kingdom of God. These are, these are always stories that have a lesson, and every good story has. Stories that only entertain us are not worth remembering, but stories with a moral to them are worth repeating. So in the parable of the weeds and the wheat, which begins in verse 24 of chapter 13, Jesus tells the story, the farmer sowed good wheat in his field, and at night his enemy came and sowed weeds in the field. When his farmhands noticed they, that along with the wheat, they are also weeds growing. They ask the farmer, what should we do? Pull out the weeds right away so that the wheat can grow unharmed? The farmer says no. As young plants, the weeds look a lot like the wheat. And you might kill some of the wheat and try to destroy the weeds. The farmer's decision is to let the weeds and the wheat grow up together. At harvest time, when all the plants are fully grown, it's easier to tell what is weeds from what is wheat. That's when we'll separate them, he says, saving the wheat in the barn and burning the weeds. I hope we can all see that what Jesus is getting at here is that this story is not so much about a farmer in his field. It's about Jesus and his church community. Even though everything and everyone that the Creator puts on earth is good, we know by experience that not everything is good. So there are a couple of lessons here for our life. First of all, we are not always good judges of what is good and what is bad. In some situations, we might judge some things or some people to be bad when they are actually good. Or we'll think it's good when perhaps it is not always so. We need to live with some things for a long time before we actually know them well. But we have to live with some people before we truly know them. If we judge too quickly, we may make a mistake, a fatal mistake, that may impact us and others for a long time. So the first lesson in this parable is, be slow to judge. A second lesson is that 
We are really not the judges at all. Jesus is. The Creator is. The Holy Spirit is. And it's only at the end, the very end, that God exercises his judgment. And Jesus tells us that God's judgment is a merciful judgment. We human beings make terrible judges because we don't see what is in someone's mind or in his heart, what is in his soul. We cannot see this, but God does. And God is willing to wait until the harvest before he decides if someone is good and just, kind and honorable. As the prophets of the Old Testament say about the Creator, he is a just and merciful God, slow to judge and swift to pardon. He is able to balance the demands of justice with the peace of mercy. And so in these in-between times, between the first coming of Jesus and his second coming, how should we act? We should try to be like Jesus, but in the end, to leave the judgment to him. Amen. Amen. Creator God, all that we need and all that we have comes from your gracious hands. As we offer up bread and wine, we recognize that these gifts come first from you. As we offer these gifts back to you, hear and answer us in our need. For peoples around the world who struggle for justice and peace in their lives, Creator God, bring an end to war and turmoil in the lives of the poor and needy, we pray to you. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are leaders of peoples and nations, Creator God, place in their hearts the respect for creation and the welfare of those they rule and guide, we pray to you. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, suffering everywhere because of the COVID-19 pandemic, Creator God, watch over us all, especially the elderly and those who whose lives are most at risk, we pray to you. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people and students who need and want an education, Creator God, may they grow to be honorable members of our communities, offering skills and abilities that will benefit others in society as a whole, we pray to you. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who bring us the good news of Jesus Christ, for priests and sisters and lay catechists. Creator God, they come in your name to share with us the beauty of faith in you and in the gospel. Give them courage to continue their ministry in your name. We pray to you. Lord, hear our prayer. For our ancestors and all who have gone before us, Creator God, we are grateful for all they have taught us about the earth and how we are to treat one another and all creation. Give them eternal life in your presence, we pray to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Creator God, even as we thank you in this celebration of Eucharist, we also bring these needs before you. Stir in our hearts a love for you and for one another. May our lives give you honor and help others to live in peace, love, hope, and charity. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will never forget my people. I have
Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness. For through He, for though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all nations. And therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him, he has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our <coughs> trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom, the power, and glory of your Son, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said through apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you, sir. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your sacraments of Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And before our final blessing and dismissal, I want to thank you all for being with us today for this Mass. Um, it's, uh, it's wonderful to be in this historic church. Uh, you know, this church was built in 1902. Um, at the time, Gruard was actually named Lesser Slave Lake Post. And uh, when Bishop Gruard moved here, they decided to name the town after him. Uh, so they changed the name of the town. Now, I would find that funny to live in a town that they name after me, to actually live in it. Uh, so if I lived in, let's say they changed the name of Grand Prairie to Pennypawville, uh, I wouldn't want to live there. But anyway, they changed the name of Gruard to, of, of Lister's name that goes to Gruard, and they built this cathedral. This was their cathedral at the time, uh, until they moved to McLennan in 1942. And, uh, so this is a very historic and uh, significant church in our diocese. And it's a, a delight to celebrate this Mass here today. Um, it's a beautiful church. Uh, we're trying to restore it. And... Uh, so that it will be beautiful for a long time to come. And, uh, so we, we work on this. Thank you, uh, Manny, for providing the music. For those who are readers, uh, thank you for uh, being a part of our service and all of those who are able to join us uh, out in uh, uh, internet land. Uh, Father Emmanuel for being our photographer, our videographer, and uh, taking care of all of the technical details. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.